Hey folks, sorry I'm late, uh, I had a uh, coaching session uh, earlier on and I finished on time and I had everything set up and then um, essentially there seems to be a problem with uh, Luna, which is the uh, the door I was going to use uh, today, with where basically it kind of, it does something where the sound stops working if, you, if you're changing over to, with, to too many different uh, apps that uh, require sound. So you have the only way of getting out of it when it gets into that situation is doing a full restart. Um, so, so yeah, um, I think maybe in future for these production sessions, I won't be using Luna. I will be using uh, Logic or something like that. It seems to be a bit more um, uh, stable. Anyway, good to see uh, you here. Hi, the Sukera, Wazuzu, Kev D, Aria, Nate, and Mr. Mojo. Um, Today, what we're going to be doing, uh, because uh, you know, there's been a fair amount of questions about what you do after splurging. So um, I thought what I would be doing, I, I mean, I'm going to make uh, some uh, videos, more kind of talky videos where I'm kind of uh, uh, sort of teaching. But, you know, one of the ways of uh, coaching people and teaching people is actually just to show them, you know, show you what I do. Um, so... Uh, that's what I'm going to do. And what I've decided to do... Hey, Andreas, Eric, L, and Rob. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a little snippet, a chunk of music that I made on uh, one of my Zentor uh, live streams. So they're, they're basically an hour long or sometimes two hours long or, or, or even longer. And uh, coming soon, because I'm nearly up to 500 subscribers from the start of the year... Uh, so on that channel, uh, coming soon, when it gets to 500 subscribers, I'm actually going to do a five-hour set. One hour for every 100 subscribers. Um, so uh, I'm going to do that pretty soon because I'm like at 454 or something uh, like that at the moment. Um, anyway, so usually these, these things are an hour or uh, two um, hours long. Um, oh, and by the way, um, I'm playing, I'm going to be doing another one because I'm doing them every day. Um, over on that channel, on the Mike Mundaly uh, channel, and the link's in the description. Anyway, so I do these sets, and uh, they're made up of, I mean, it's kind of, uh, it's interesting what they end up being. I, I call it long-form music, in that they're diff they are definitely different tracks in a way, but also they are linked, because they all start from the same seed. Yeah, so it starts somewhere, and it just kind of develops. So don't work... I mean, in the last few sessions, I literally haven't worked anything out beforehand. <laughs> uh, sometimes I st have a starting point and sometimes I don't. Recently, just because be I've been so busy, I don't have a starting point. I just start and they kind of turn into these different things and they go through different kind of uh, transformations and everything. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen. It's like um, I'm, I, I was actually uh, commenting, uh, sort of replying to a comment in, in, the, uh, in YouTube saying i'm so grateful that i get to be able to do this because it's like i'm not even the creator i'm just a participant in the creative process it's like i'm not the person doing it it's happening you know the machines and it's it's like i'm just another cog in the system uh, if you like and it's a really great feeling to, to 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 feel like that anyway um so these things are quite long and um you know obviously it's quite a high bar for people to um come and have you know, this very long thing on. And at some point, I do want to release individual shorter, you know, normal length tracks off off these things. Um, and I thought what would be fun was to is to actually show you how I would do that. Because really what, what the performances are is just splurging, you know, from beginning through to, uh, uh, to end, uh, really. It's just one long uh, splurge. So what I can do is take different sections and actually turn these into what you would call a single or, or, or tracks. Okay. Um, and I thought what would be cool would be to show you the different stages of the creative process by doing this with a particular piece of music, or with a particular uh, uh, chunk of this. Because one of the mistakes that, uh, me included, but uh, musicians and uh, producers make when they're trying to make music is they try to do everything all at once and they're not clear on the what the stages of every creative process it doesn't matter what genre of music you make it doesn't matter what um 
uh, gear you have, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, you know, even it doesn't matter even that it's music. This is the same is true of uh, writing novels, writing poetry, making art, uh, building businesses. The creative process is essentially the same. It has the same stages because it's just how it works. It's like, you know, it's like breathing or, or, or you know, the sun coming up. This is how the creative process works. And there are distinct stages to each creative process. And, you know, what my automatic music machine is, is that is that model of the creative process applied to uh, music. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the next stage of the creative process after splurging, because splurging is idea generation, which I call discovery. Okay. Um, and I'm actually going to do what I would do. Now, I just have to let you know that there is a slight wrinkle. There's a, there's a slight bit of a complexity about this because I have, uh, for me, because I haven't actually, um, since I started doing these live streams, I haven't actually worked out how I'm going to turn these, like literally the, the nuts and bolts of how I'm going to work with these track with these tracks, because essentially what I've got, I've got them here on the screen. Is it this? No this oh that's good isn't it that's not quite very well uh, hang on a minute i know what's going on let me just check this it's very weird stream deck huh oh i know what happened that's okay i've got it i've got it all right There we go. Yes, brilliant. Right, so, um, yeah. I haven't actually worked out how I'm going to do this <laughs> because the reason being, I, uh, I'll i tell you what, I'll do, what I do first. Okay, so I actually, and hopefully this doesn't break everything. I forgot to open this up when I did the restart. Fingers crossed. The sound keeps working. I think it should be okay because I think it's Luna that breaks it, not Gig Performer. Oh, please, please work. All right. Ah, oh, okay. Am I still? Can you still hear me? Am I? I don't sound like some kind of evil robot or anything. Um. Good. Okay. So, um, basically, I don't, don't worry about the screen. I don't really use the screen. So. I use this on um, my, um, to, to play. I, this is the, so I don't actually use a door. This isn't a door. This is a bit like uh, main stage, Apple main stage. Okay. So, um, oh, good. <laughs> um, it's good. Yes. I, I think basically what I need to do is just when I'm doing these kinds of things uh, on live streams, I need to just avoid Luna. Unless I'm demonstrating Luna, of course, uh, because the trouble is opening and closing Luna. It just you can't deal with it for some reason. Anyway, um, so this is what I use to actually play, because really I've only got three instruments, actual sound making things. I've got the Mother 32, which is basically the most expensive hat um, you will ever um, find anywhere. <laughs> so I just basically use it as a hat um, at this point. So, sometimes I do twist the knob and it turns into like a bass or an acid sound occasionally, but really it's a hat. Uh, but, uh, then, so, so really, I wouldn't even really call that a sound. The, the main things are the subharmonicon, uh, which does the, the kind of um, the chords and things like that. And then the, the DFAM is the rhythm. And then I've got me on the piano. Oh dear, you see there's a problem. Isn't there? going to do that's going to be a problem anyway i'll think about it later I'll, I'll keep i'll keep on talking so um yes i've got the i've got the rhythm on the dfam and i've got the uh, a piano which is coming out of that over there uh this macbook pro and also a string um as well so this piano and it sounds horrible because there's something wrong with luna 
Yeah. And then this string sound. No. There we go. Yeah, sorry about the distortion. I'm going to have to do a, some kind of uh, band-aid situation to stop that from happening. I knew Luna would be playing up somehow today. Anyway, so, um, so essentially, down here, this is the subharmonicon, and this is the chain I've got it going through. So all of the sounds I make are only coming from those four sounds, and everything else is done with, with um, this. That's the Tornado, uh, Struggle Bites Tornado, on the subharmonicon. This is the Mother 32 uh, Tornado. You can do all sorts of cool, cool things with a hat. And then on the DFAM, although I'm using this less now, I've got the uh, Looperator. Okay. Uh, and I don't always have these on, but basically th these are effects, essentially. And added to that, I've also got this which is a very, very simple kind of effects machine. You can't actually edit it very much, but it's got four knobs, uh, sorry, five knobs, where you can basically significantly change the sound. That's on the subharmonicon as well. And this is on the DFAM. And th th this really is more like a, th this one, this retro thing is more like making it kind of slightly distorted, saturated and uh, things uh, like that, essentially. Um, and the rest of these things here are in order to warm up the sound because I find that the Tornado, the actual functionality is absolutely awesome. You can do loads and loads of things with them, but they sound really digital and really harsh to my ear. So I put everything through, like there's a API vision channel strip and like uh, this, this compressor here, this is the UAD stuff. Um, in order to warm it up, I you know cut off loads of high end and just make it kind of uh, warm it up. Um, and and so these effects are the performable effects. These are these are what I'm doing when I'm twisting knobs here. And uh, then on top of that, I also have these what I call the static effects, which are anyone who has super massive. By the way, this is free. Like if you want the biggest reverb known to mankind and it sounds amazing and it's free go to valhalla and download this it's just it's over everything that i do it's one of my favorite plugins uh it's just totally awesome and it blows my mind that it's free there are other stuff's great as well i use this all the time okay so that's a static effect so in other words i can put that on things this lexicon is a static effect it's just a, a, another reverb that is slightly less big <laughs> but it's still and it's great I've got this, which is a room thing. Um, and then this, which is like a kind of uh, non-linear 80s kind of uh, reverb thing. Oh yeah, and then I've got Echo Boy over here for, for a delay. And these ones down here are the static effects. So I can't perform them, I just can add them to things if I want to. Okay, so uh, basically that's how I perform live. It's just with these three things, just really four sounds if you don't include the mother thirty-two, because it's just a hat and me playing and everything else is just performed with um effects and you know th the reason i'm telling you this is because if you can think about how much can i do with how little you're going to get so much better at what you're doing so much faster right i'm literally using four sounds and then effects. Four sounds. Well, five if you include the hat. Okay. Yeah, and you I mean you can do you can do unlimited numbers of things. And okay, I can play the piano and I can do that. But but even, you know, it doesn't matter whether I can play or not, you've you've still got that ability if you're drawing things in. Yeah. More is not better. Yeah, more sounds is not better. More makes it more difficult to mix, more confusing to do. It means you practice less. Yeah, so that's that's one thing to take from this. Anyway, I'm getting off the I'm getting off the the point. So, I do these things live, and I've just got to close these down because I've got these windows stay on top. Oh no, what have I done there? Uh, let's move that over there. Okay. Now, if I go over to Luna, and hopefully this won't be ing. 
Okay. This thing, we're okay. Yeah. So basically, when I'm performing, I record the those things in separately. Okay. So down here is the subharmonic on dry. So that's without the tornado, without the static effects. You can hear this here. It's very quiet because it comes in very quiet. Okay. The Mother 32 dry. Yeah, there's a filter on that. You can probably hear that, so don't worry. Yeah, but anyway, it's going. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then there's a defam dry, although this isn't really in this track because it's muted um, in the actual performance. Yeah, anyway. So I've got those instruments coming in dry there. Um, but what I also have coming in is the affected signal. So through the looperator, through the tornado, yeah, uh, through those various different things. Now, the defam isn't in this actual track, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay. Um, and actually, the Mother 32 is not in this track either. Although, yeah, so I'm going to get rid of these parts too. But this is the subharmonic and affected signal, so through the tornado. Okay, so this includes what I performed in the actual thing. Uh, and this is me playing, okay? There should be a lot of clicking going on, so I apologize about that. I don't think it's on the actual signal. So that's just just the live instrument, you know, just when I say live instruments of VST, but it's me playing it, yeah, uh, throughout any effects. And then I've got the, eff the, the static effects coming in separately as well, being recorded in separately. Yeah. Okay. Um, so really, actually, looking at it, so th these aren't relevant because they're, they're not actually you can't actually hear them in the performance. So really, all we have in the in the track that I'm working on at the moment is this, this, and this. Okay. And I've just got a, I just noticed a question which I will answer. Um, my auto one. Does this set up the thing that makes the live performance also sound mastered? Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad that it sounds like that to you. Uh, it, yeah. So, um, actually, ignore this. This one, Gold Foss Live, because I'm just testing it. Uh, it might not actually go in. But uh, essentially, what I've done is this compressor. There's one, so there's this compressor, and this is a bit of EQ. Uh, there's this is a compressor. There's two compressors on the the um, defam here, um, and this is an EQ. So I've got the this is on the defam. You can see it's quite intense the EQ I've got going on it, uh, and then this compressor and this compressor on the defam. This is through the defam through the affected signal yeah and also that really this is a tube thing so this is a compressor too so the, the 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 beat is actually very kind of highly it's there's a there's a lot of processing relatively speaking uh, going on through there and then with the hat <laughs> i can't believe i just do, do there's there's no less than three so there's like a this is a channel strip so this is hang on, I've got, um, hidden behind some things so this is a API Vision channel strip, so it's got EQ, it's got um, uh, compression, um, 
and and stuff and then it's going through some tape yeah and then it's going to a compressor um, as well so those are all quite affected that like um, sort of process signals yeah and then i'm just doing the classic and just going through a bus compressor here the ssl bus compressor so that's what makes it sound somewhat mastered <laughs> Although the other thing that makes it sound mastered is that um, I have, when I'm playing this thing, which is an uh, isotope, um, and I can't play it, unfortunately, because, um, which basically has, it's like it, what, what it does is it's got the low, low mid, high mid, and high, and it shows you the shape of what's coming out. So I've got this, if you'll notice here, this is what this is. It's coming out of the end. Yeah, so it's actually showing me the rough shape of the various different frequencies that are happening. So if I'm playing and all of a sudden the bass is going whoop, like right out, out, up here, then I, and by the way, I don't think this is massively accurate, and you, it's, but it's actually really good for live playing because what happens when you're, when you're live is you could, it's like you get zero, because you're focused on one thing, you get zeroed in on it and you don't notice like maybe the hats are like like making people's ears bleed <laughs> or maybe you know the bass is giving people involuntary bowel movements you you don't, you don't notice that but i have this kind of in the middle of the screen so i've always just got a visual saying okay that's the hats are probably a bit loud or you know the mid range is 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 peaking a bit too much yeah so it just it just it's just a visual representation of of what i'm doing so a lot of the supposed mastering when I'm doing it live is in me just making sure that the levels are okay and not, you know, sort of uh, blowing something out. Um, another question, does every beat need some type of bass line? No, because then it's not a beat. <laughs> I mean, a beat is a beat. So all a beat needs is a beat. Um, it doesn't need a bass line. Um, that would be like saying, does every piece of music need a beat? Or does every uh, melody, uh, do, I don't know. Do, yeah, does every, yeah, no. Uh, it depends what you want to do. If you want to have a bass line, then yes. <laughs> if you don't, then no. Um, so, all right. So coming back, coming back to, so so there you go. I've got, that, that's that's my stuff. So really, what we have here is the little track. And if I just go back to an earlier version. And start. This guy changes. It's opening now. So if I go to version R. uh yeah so the earlier so the earlier uh th so this is the entire performance yeah so just ignore these three at the bottom because these are all dry signals yeah so this isn't actually the this isn't actually the thing these three down here um these are the dry signals coming in from the three machines you can hear them yeah so that's with no effects yeah and if i just do the opposite. Okay. So listen, do you hear the difference? <laughs> it's quite quite different, right? So these are the, this is the the D found the mother, and the um, in fact, just to make it a a fairer comparison, I'm going to turn off the live instruments. Okay. So this is just the D found the mother and the subharmonic and dry without any of those effects that I just showed you. Yeah. And, and the compression and the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds all right, doesn't it? It's okay. But it doesn't sound like this, does it? I've got to mute these. If you compare 
it again with that bit. So one of the things, one of the things that you want to develop, right, when you're making uh, music in the early stages is the ability to hear past that, that. Right? Because I can hear that. So let's say I was like splurging, like, like I'm, I'm asking you to, and I heard that, I would be able to hear past the fact that it didn't sound, that it, that it doesn't have the stuff on it that makes it sound like this. I mean, apart from anything else, it's louder, which makes it sound better. Yeah, which is a which is a problem. But 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 it just I know that I can make it sound like that. Yeah, which is much more exciting. It's much fuller. It's got more of a thing. Yeah, and one of the mistakes that people make at the start is they just put too much in because it sounds like this. <laughs> Taking me a while. I need to do this with groups, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, of course it's uh, super mundo. It's a little bass heavy. It's just because I've not got, I've not done anything with it. But, but, but you can, can you see, can you see how being able to hear past things means you don't, you, you won't end up doing things that you don't need to do. Okay. So anyway, coming, uh, uh, coming back to it. So this is the whole, this is the whole thing. And what we're actually going to be working on, what I'm going to be making a track out of, is the end. And ignore the pops, I'm sorry about that. There's something weird going on with Luna. What I'll do is I'll just play I'll just play what we're working on first and then we'll start talking about the first stage of the process. Play, play the whole thing is because it's important to actually understand the thing so that we know what to do next. Okay? So maybe use it as an opportunity to do a bit of meditation or something.
Because there's going to be a few mistakes happening in a minute. <laughs> I got a bit excited. Okay, you get the picture. So, basically that, that last bit is repeated a few times. Turn it down while talking. Okay. So, so yeah, just to uh, clear up this, uh, Mike's already answering, but the Sakura says the position placed in the chain uh, is important. This is in relation to the plugins 
uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, it makes a big difference uh, which order you put things in. Having said that, there isn't a right way to do it. In a sense, there are uh, you have to understand what what the what the difference what what is actually doing right because when you're um, EQing something, I mean in a way EQ and compression and saturation are all the same thing in a way. What you're really doing is you're um, bringing out certain frequencies or uh, pushing back certain frequencies. I mean, there are other things too, um, but but th that's essentially you know a, a really useful way of thinking about EQ and compression and saturation is that in a sense they're uh, the same thing. They're, they're doing very similar things, but just in a slightly in a in a very different way. Um, essentially, it's about bringing things out and pushing things back. Yeah. Um, and when you're EQing uh, something, uh, you know, some people will say, well, oh, I always EQ first, and then I put the EQ into the compression. And other people will say, I always put compress first, and then... And really, it's like, I, I don't always do anything. Yeah, what I usually do is I think, okay, what am I trying... What is the purpose of the compression? Like, this word purpose is going to come up a lot. We're about to talk about it, okay. What is the purpose of the compression? What is the purpose of the cue? Why am I doing it? Right? And what does that actually mean for, for instance, the order in which I want to put them? Yeah. So for instance, here on the end, in playing that, here you'll see there's another chain here. Um, and uh, you, yeah, just don't worry about it too much. But basically what I've got is I've got an EQ here. And then I've got three, no less than three limiters. Okay, doing a very little uh, amount, yeah, uh, which is giving a very kind of sort of in-your-face type uh, type sound. So I've got the EQ first here. However, over here, I've got an, an uh, I've got a saturator, which is a kind of it's a bit like a compressor. Um, does a very it's hard to say, but but and then I've got an EQ. Okay. Um, and on top of that, here, I've got tape on at the end, which is a bit like, and also this, which is a, a summing thing, which is kind of a, like tape is a, it's a, a, it's a little bit like, it tapes a bit, little bit like a saturation and compression together, <laughs> right? So, so, uh, so yeah, but, but, but essentially, This isn't right, but it's a way of thinking about it. Okay, because I'm not like a I'm not like a, a technical um, I'm not an engineer. Yeah, I'm an artist who uses engineer you know uses the tools of engineering to try and get a result. Yeah, it's really really important for those of us who aren't technical like me um, to kind of take that frame. Yeah. So this is how I think about it. It's not right, and probably anyone who is an engineer would be like going, "What is he talking about?" Right? But this is how I how I think about it. What EQ is uh, doing is making it it's like it's bringing out certain frequencies, yeah, and it, it can make things uh, pop out. And what you can do is you put if you can put put, put a, an EQ into a compression. It kind of, kind of squashes it back in again, okay. So, like my preference in general is to use EQ first and compression second. But that's not always the case because sometimes I might want a certain frequency to pop out, right? Uh, similarly, if, for instance, I mean, in the over here. And this isn't meant to be a compression and EQ tutorial, but, but we'll get back to the point in a second. Over here, here you'll see I've actually got this. So we've got the, the DFAM, then the looperator, which is the, the effects thing that I sometimes put on the DFAM. And then we've got this, which is a, it's like a kind of tube emulation thing, which is basically like saturation and compression. So I've actually got saturate uh, saturation and compression coming first then eq and, and this is really quite an, an intense eq so it's, it's, a, it's a, a very strong eq 
Yeah. Um, and uh, I wouldn't usually do uh, like do that if I was producing something, but I d but then I'm essentially this is a little bit like a limiter. Yeah, I'm using this one as a bit a bit like a limiter, and this is this is an EQ, uh, an EQ as a compressor. <laughs> okay. Um, so in order to kind of squash in that quite intense amount of processing that that I've done in terms of the EQ. Okay, so yes, the order is important. It, it makes a massive difference. But what I would recommend is instead of thinking about, instead of trying to learn what the right thing to do is, do as little as possible and listen to the difference that it makes when you do it. You don't actually need to understand, well, I mean, it's helpful, but you don't have to understand exactly what it's doing in order to be able to use it. Yeah, you just need to be able to hear what it's doing. Does it bring the, you know, is it bringing something forward? Is it pushing it back? What impact is it having on the actual sound? And what happens if I put things in a different order? And obviously this can get incredibly overwhelming because there's so many options. Yeah, each compressor has God knows how many knobs on it and you don't even know what they do and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so do the littlest possible and see what the littlest possible does to the sound. Yeah, anyway. Coming back, okay, keep on getting distracted by all of this EQ and compression nonsense. So, uh, so uh, coming back to the um, so Aria is saying about the it's hard to meditate when someone next to you is coughing. So that probably means that you're not meditating um, in the way that you might be. Uh, so do you know one of the best the best things that I use in order to improve my when well, I improve that's the wrong way screaming children is a very very um powerful way of um developing your meditation um because with a screaming child uh I mean when I say screaming child, I'm talking about a child who is sort of, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're not a parent, you might think, oh my God, if you've got a screaming child, you need to go and blah, blah. But if they're like tantruming, if they're in another place, sometimes you've just got to, you just got to write it out. Okay? It's just simple as that. You just got to make sure they don't hurt anyone or themselves. That's something you definitely got to do. And you've got to keep an eye on them, make sure they're okay. Sometimes you just got to write it out. A tantruming child is actually one of the, the greatest ways that you can meditate. Okay. So, yeah, when you say it's hard to meditate when someone's coughing, maybe you're misunderstanding what meditation actually is. Anyway, coming back, <laughs> getting off track. My squirrel, <laughs> things go happening again. All right, coming back to the thing. Right, we so so I'm going to open the session version, which is remove rest of performance, which is actually the bit we're we're focused on. Month of waking up, I'm meditating uh, with it every day. Absolutely, no problem at all. Actually, Aria, if you'd like to uh, understand more about what I'm talking about in relation to uh, meditation, then try the Waking Up app. Um, it's actually, uh, yeah, that that that's like what we're talking about there. I think sometimes people uh, they think that um, meditation is about be is about like being calm and having a clear mind and all that, and it's not actually quite about that. So. Yes, of course, there are different ways to meditate. So anyway, so OK, so I have a question for you about this, uh, this track, because really, when you've got a splurge, let's say you've got a splurge and you want to know what to do next. OK, so how do you make decisions? How do you make decisions? How do you make the decisions about what to do next? Post in the chat. So you've got this splurge, you want to work on it. You listen to it. How do you decide what to do next?
So, uh, Super Amondo says, what does the track need? Right, ask yourself questions. Yeah, what questions? Yeah, after the, so you've, you've done a splurge, you finished it, then you, I mean, I mean, you know, if you're new to this kind of area, uh, then like, what would you usually do? Yeah, you don't have to know the right answer. What would you usually do? So, Mike, I go with the first thing that pops in my head. Austin, listen to what the track is telling you. Brilliant. Any chord changes? Super El Mundo. Ask what you're trying to do with the track. Brilliant. And see which element will help you achieve it. Okay, awesome. Right. So, so the thing is, the first thing that pops in your head, that's great. There's absolutely no, no problem with that. Like, go with, with things that pop into your head. The thing is, what happens... Kara says, see what ideas might hit. Let the list them. Try them out. Brilliant. Ask what is missing. Okay. Ask what is missing, Aria. I would say that is probably um, not that helpful for various different reasons I'll go into right now. Um, aha! Mr. Mr. Mojo. Brilliant. What is the purpose of the track? Right. Now, the reason... And now, not everyone does this. Okay. I didn't do it for very many years. But the reason this is such a, a fantastic, yeah, big, big uh, cheer for uh, Mr. Mojo. Um, that's weird. Why is that only coming through the left? Oh, never mind. Um, so um, the reason this is such a powerful uh, question is that it is a decision or a choice that allows you to make other decisions and choices. So absolutely, the first thing that pops into your head does it need any chord changes? What's missing? Uh, do I like this? Um, uh, what is it? What is the track telling me? Yeah, it, it's like you can have any number of ideas about that, but there's no reason for one idea to be better than another. So what happens if five things pop into your head? Yeah, all of which are totally different. Yeah. What happens if, I mean, the trouble is with the question, what is missing? And that is a question that a lot of people ask, uh, Aria. I, I mean, I asked it for years and years. So you're not, you know, you're not, you're not crazy <laughs> for, for asking that question. I think that's probably the most, the most, it's what people say more than anything else, right? The trouble is with the, the what's missing question is that it, what's the assumption behind what's missing? The assumption that there is something missing. And the, also the assumption is that I need to put more in. Whereas, I mean, as we've, like, as I'm showing right here with this track, and this is one of the reasons I chose it, is, I mean, there's nothing playing in that. There's nothing here, and there's nothing here. So this is effects, yeah, and this is the subharmonicon, and this is just a piano, yeah. And there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing actually missing from it. It's very full. It's like it's a wall of sound type track. Yeah. So what's missing can actually send you down multiple rabbit holes. You don't need to go down. Yeah. Plus all of that, you know, what chord changes does it need? What could I do? All those different things. It's like you can make a number of different decisions. Whereas if you make a higher order decision, what is the purpose of this track? what is it expressing yeah or what could it be expressing you've then made a decision about it and that decision can make it can change in the future depending on what happens but you've made a decision at a point in time which allows you to make other decisions it's making sense it gives you a direction of travel which makes everything much simpler so say you had 10 ideas in your head and you don't know you haven't decided on on a purpose yeah well then you're in like option hell yeah but if you've made a decision this is the purpose of this track yeah or this could be the purpose of this track this is what i think the purpose might be yeah then you now have and you have 10 ideas then you think well which of these ideas are the ones which serve the purpose or, or potentially serve the purpose the most yeah, it gives you a way of making decisions. It simplifies your decision making process by like this is what I do in my life all the time. I think, how can I make one decision 
that will essentially make a number of other decisions for me. Now, you always have to check that it's still the right decision. The danger with it is if you make one decision, which makes lots of other decisions, then you end up just doing the same thing over and over again. So again, this purpose that you decide on at this point in the process, which is what I call discovery, yeah, isn't set in stone. Nothing is set in stone. But by making that decision, what could be the purpose of this track? It simplifies everything that you have to do. And really, the, one of the most difficult things about the creative process is that it is absolute, I mean, it's just a, so many decisions you have to make at all times. And one of the most difficult things for a human brain to do is make decisions in the face of uncertainty, right? Because when we, because that, you know, that it just goes against like our, the ways that our minds work. We want certainty, yeah, but the creative process is saying, I need to make a decision about, you know, which order do I put the uh, compressor in the EQ in? <laughs> do I use a compressor EQ? Which one do I use? What do I do when I've got it? You know, and all of these decisions, you don't know the answer to the question. You don't know what's right. So you just end up like going round and round in circles. So by having a higher order decision that you've already made, it makes everything much simpler. Okay. So you've got a splurge and you, and by the way, if you want to actually do this, Tomorrow, we're doing a turbo track attack and I'll show you exactly, you know, you can do it with me. We'll be doing it together. Yeah, there's a link in the description. Anyway, so the, these, deci yeah, these decisions about the purpose. Okay, so let me ask you and post in the chat. When you listen to that piece of music, and please uh, be kind. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's sorry, you don't have to be. You can, you can, you can insult it all you want. That's, that's absolutely fine. But what, what? Let, let's just let's just keep this simple. What, what were you feeling? You know, like what kind of feelings was the music bringing up when you were listening to it? Yeah. What was it already kind of expressing? What was, what was, what was expressing as you as you heard it? Yeah, what were the kind? Of, what was the kind of emotions that it was uh, it was giving you? So Ottawan was is asking a question. Oh, no, with, with the Turbo Track Attack, because if we used the splurges you've already got, it would be way too confusing for people because they'll have splurged at different levels. We're going to start from fresh, but you can use that process from, do you know what I mean? You, you can use the rest of the process on, on your, the splurges that you've already got. Yeah. I was going to do it just from beyond the splurge, but I thought, well, actually it's going to be hard. People will have splurges at different points in the process and it'll be very confusing. So let's just start from uh, uh, the beginning. Anyway, so the Sakura says something spiritual almost. Relaxation, Rob says. Uh, sensucht maybe are German emotions allowed? Of course they are. <laughs> um, serenity, uplifting, relaxed, yeah. Reprieve or relief. Okay, so all of these are you know emotions or feelings or kind of states, yeah, that we're mentioning. So I. The f my first step is say, okay, so what, you know, what is that, the, you know, any change has to start with being clear about what it is already. Yeah. So my process is to go, okay, well, at the moment, this is expressing for me. For me, and this is what I love about instrumental music is that it can, exp like the same thing can be different things to many people. And I love that about in instrumental music. Yeah. Uh, there isn't a right answer. Yeah. And I also, you know, uh, I'm working on lyrics as well. I actually love lyrics that aren't, oh dear, what have I done there? Uh, that aren't massively sp specific uh, too, right? But anyway, for, for me, what what this is, this is about longing. It's, it's sort of, you know, that sort of uh, happy, sad thing. <laughs> But it's a like it's almost like um
It's re it's remembering a past time that is no more, but which I m remember happily. So longing maybe is the wrong word. It's almost like a past love or a past period of, of my life, which is no longer here, but which I really, really appreciate. And I'm, I'm sad that it's not there anymore, but I'm grateful that I, I, w I got to experience that. Yeah. So when I say longing, that's kind of what I mean by it. Yeah. So it's, it's for me at the moment, that's what this is expressing. It's like that kind of, yeah, it's not really nostalgia, um, but yeah, along the lines of, because uh, nostalgia is, is, it's a bit more, um, what's the word? Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I think maybe nostalgia makes it seem like it wasn't real. Yeah, or something. It's like I'm making stuff up, but this is more like this is what happened and it was wonderful and it's no longer here and I'm sad about that, but I'm glad it did. Yeah, that's what that is, this is expressing for me. Right, so now I have a kind of subject area. Okay, and to be fair, I'm like, as it is at the moment, if I just uh, probably replayed the piano a bit so that I got, got rid of the mistakes and stuff, I could actually release this as it is now, it, you know, that it, it's got it's got something to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what, you know, what you can do with uh, something um, as a just as a demo, really. OK. Um, wistfulness. That's that's a good word. Yeah. Um, Robert, yes, this will be this will be up. Yeah, I'm I'm keeping this up, um, so it won't go anywhere. Um, that, that's a good question, Mike. Did you have that feeling before during the playing of it? Not before. So this wasn't planned. It just came out of the what was happening at the time, and yeah, it's not working. So um, yeah, I can't play the piano unfortunately in this, which is unfortunate. But anyway. Um, It kind of ended up at this at this moment. Um, I'll just play the bit into it, and I'll just narrate what happened because I think it's useful to um, understand. Start. It's f useful for you to understand how I actually make the music when I'm making it because this is what discovery is. Yeah, that that like discovery is the is the the superpower which we all have access to um and which is highly underrated in in uh music making and perpetual music it's it's an absolute travesty <laughs> uh, and it needs to stop right so that's what i'm trying to do now right so because this question, did you have that feeling before the playing of it, or it, it is, is, is really what I'm talking about? You don't have to have an idea in order to make ideas. You don't have to know what it's about before you make it. Yeah. You don't, yeah, I don't know what I said, Aria, unfortunately. So, so I don't know when my voice glitched. You don't have to have an idea. You don't have to know the purpose before you make the music. Yeah, you don't have to know the purpose before you splurge. You don't even have to know the purpose in order to know what to do next, but it can be helpful. You can just choose, you can just choose one. Yeah. And this is really about, about discovery. It's like, do you need to know what it is that you're doing before doing it? Or can you discover what it is you're doing it by can you discover what you're doing by doing it? Yeah. So um so this was the end of the previous bit. Hang on a minute, what's going on now? Uh nothing seems to be playing. Oh, I think it's because I hopefully anyway, it's because I muted it or turned it down. Or maybe it's just totally stopped working. 
Oh yeah, that's solo. The old solo mistake. There we go. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the process is called discovery, so. All right, so this was the bit before. So at that point, I'm, so it's been playing, I haven't played the piano, you know, I've just started, I haven't really played the piano for a bit, so I, I bring the piano in, I start playing the piano, and here I'm just playing whatever, I'm not trying to find anything, I'm just playing notes, yeah, which are in key, yeah, and at some point, what comes out of my fingers, it ends up being the thing. remember i remember at this point thinking oh that's 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 a nice little uh, progression yeah what is it <laughs> first of all i didn't know what it was it turned out that it was b flat to e flat yeah one four one four one four yeah um and so then i was like okay so there's going to be a melody or a motif that comes out of this at some point yeah so i'm essentially listening for that i'm not trying to find it i'm just listening for it coming out my fingers, yeah? Okay, there, right? So then I played something and for some reason I went, ah. Okay, I just went, ah. It was like a little bell <laughs> yeah, that went off. Bing! I was like, ah, that. Da -da 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 -da. I, can, I can't play the piano, unfortunately, which is really annoying, but because it's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Luna's not doing me any favor. So, yeah, that, that thing there. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that. What can I do with that? So could you hear there? That's an answering phrase. Da, na, na. Yeah, question and answer. Yeah. So when I played that, I was like, ah, that. Okay. So what could be the answer to that? Immediately, straight away. That's, that's just what I mean. It's not really going through my mind, but it's what I'm doing. Yeah. So that's the answer. Is that the one I want, though? I don't know. We'll see. So that bit there, the da -da -na 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 -na. yeah, that I was like, okay, that's the motif. I've got kind of an answer there. I was like, again, this isn't conscious, but but this is sort of the way that I think about it. Okay, so I've got a motif. Then what I want to do immediately is number one, find a, an answering phrase, and number two, um have the something else which isn't as 
Well, strong is the wrong word, but as catchy, next. Because then when I come back to it, yeah, so it's... Yeah, and then I just went... Bing, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, which is almost like the equivalent of a verse to a chorus. Yeah, so you're sort of like there's this sort of more static thing. And then when you come back to it, it has this contra. Oh, that. Da, da, da. So it's kind of creates a lift. Yeah. So I'm thinking about how to create these, this shape. Yeah. So. Yeah, so this is like the, the verse. So again, what I've done there is I've taken a bit of the motif, da 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 da, -da yeah, and made it more verse-like, yeah. So I'm 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 I've got the I got the little bit. I moved away from the bit with just some kind of not random note like in key notes, but kind of randomish notes, yeah. And then I bring it closer to that motif again, na 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 na, yeah. So we're moving towards it, yeah. And now I've lost my place, which is really annoying. Yeah. Right, so then we're back to the da da da. And then what, what ends up happening is I end up, I think, okay, this is, this, this is starting to sound like something. And then I'm like, well, this could be a, I mean, again, this isn't conscious. This is just sort of happening. <laughs> but it's like, if I just keep banging away at this motif and doing little variations and building up what comes up behind it, because at this point I was like, this is after I'd got that little motif, that little melody going, that was when I started feeling, okay, so this is making me feel like, I mean, again, it wasn't conscious, but I was feeling like, Oh, there's this thing I no longer have, but I'm so glad that I had it. Yeah, it's almost like I have that that feeling around me. So to come back to Mike's question, no, because it happened, it came out of the music that came out of my fingers, which, I mean, unbidden almost. Yeah. And the fact that I'm actually playing, so often people go, yeah, but I can't play. So how do I do that? But it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter. I mean... You know, I'm not playing the notes coming out of the subharmonicon. Yeah, they're happening from me twisting knobs. And I'm not even planning what they're doing. They're just, th th they're coming out of that, which is making me have a feeling, which is then meaning I'm doing something else in response to it. So what discovery is, is, or is not, I have an idea and I'm going to make it happen now. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not that. What discovery is there's something happening. What is happening? What am I going to do with it? Right? What is this making me feel? Okay, so how can I go how can I go in that direction? Yeah. Um <clears throat> okay. So I'm gonna see if I can get a piano going here. Uh and then I need to stop in ten minutes. But we'll do it, we'll do another of these and we'll carry on working on this track. There's been a lot of uh uh, going left, right, and centre, which my squirrel mind uh, is uh, likely to do in these uh, sessions. But hopefully you're getting some kind of value. Oh, where is it? God, I, always... oh, I don't use any of these at all. Uh, oh, there we go. This, let's see. I'm going to have to plug in a different lead. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, excuse me for a second. So yeah, at this stage, does anyone have any uh, questions about what I'm talking about? Uh, just while I'm doing this. Um, 
Hopefully this is plugged in. Okay, it is. There we go. Is that working? Um, oh, I've done it. Yet, that's why. Boom. <laughs> yes. Thanks for the squirrel, Kev. Squirrel. Right, brilliant. We've got a piano. So I need to disable these, otherwise the latency will be insane. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's get a bit of the old the old reverb going. Where are we? Uh B right. Oop. From selected send. Oh, I don't need that. And let's call you. Reverb. And we'll get a bit of the old free supermassive. Go and download it immediately uh, because it's just the Don reverb. Oh, I mean, it's an absurd reverb, of course. Uh, it's like a... This... There we go. Oh, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Goes on forever. <laughs> it never stops. It's kind of a delay and a reverb, actually. It's kind of a delay that turns into a reverb. It's not just a reverb, but it's kind of, uh, yeah, anyway. Um. Okay, so Rob's asking, it's a very good question. Does any of that info go round in your head when you're playing live, or are you just going with the flow? So this is a, f this is a thing about practice, okay? Um, what the, people make the mistake all the time of going like how am i going to assimilate all this information um and then they go and get more information yeah because like, well i can't I, I mean i don't i don't know enough yeah or i haven't yet but really at this stage now when i'm playing live like I'm not like literally thinking through each of these things. It's like, but I've practiced improvisation enough, right? And imp and it could be anything. It could be uh, EQing. It could be compression. It could be arranging. It could be anything. Yeah, I I've practiced it enough that it no longer is a conscious. It's no longer a, a sort of conscious thought process. It's just what what happens. Yeah. Um. But obviously, in order to do it in the first place, you, you you kind of you want to be able to understand it in some way, okay? Um, so when you know I'm I'm showing you these different things, yes, at first you will be, and of course, if you're not playing live, you don't have to do it in the moment, right? But you will be kind of following a process that, so for instance, that I've laid out for you. So say you did the turbo track attack then you'll be consciously having to apply the, 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 the thing at first. But that won't be your experience forever because by doing it, repeating, and this is the important thing about information, by repeating the same insight or the same learning over and over again, rather than going and getting more, that's how you're actually learning the thing because you're applying it. It's becoming muscle memory, if you like, or mental memory. Well, you don't have to think about it anymore. It, it, it happens. It's just what you do. Yeah, this is how you master things. This is why, and when I say master things, I don't mean with a limiter and stuff. I mean like mastery. Yeah, this is why I so 
so thoroughly recommend using the minimum amount of stuff that you can because then you will get this mastery thing and it's not that i don't think you ever achieve mastery it's a never ending you know it's like the horizon but you will get there much quicker because you're doing you're spending more time practicing using less things right i mean I, again i'm using a piano occasionally a string sound and essentially two other sounds right that's why it's improving so much so quickly if you compare what i was doing in january to what i'm doing now it's ridiculous it's not because i'm some kind of like genius or anything it's just because i'm doing very little yeah i'm, I'm focusing on very 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 little yeah and that is making the progress very very fast okay so no i'm not i'm not th like consciously thinking through but it's the process it, it, it's why i did the things that i was doing automatically and you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. This is not talent. I have struggled throughout my life not being as good as almost every other musician that I've worked with. Yeah. I, I went, you know, I went, I mean, I, you know, when I was at school, at my first school, I was, you know, amongst the best. But then I went to my second school and then I went to university and I was amongst the worst. Yeah. So, and now in my first uh, band, I was easily the worst musician out of the three of us. Like right, these other two, Andy from Groove Armada and um, Dan, I wasn't in Groove Armada, by the way. The, the, Andy went on to do Groove Armada. They were unbelievable musicians. Like they were so, it just kind of poured out of them. For me, it was always a struggle. Yeah. So this isn't about... This isn't about talent. This isn't about that. It's about practice. Yeah, it's about practicing less. Yeah. Anyway, right. So coming back, coming back. So I now know that the purpose. Well, at the moment, the 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 track is expressing um, longing. Yeah, or some kind of past that I'm sad it's gone, but I'm really happy that I experienced that thing. So, and as I said, I could make this track just about that, yeah, um, and nothing else. But what I'm going to do in order to show you the next stage of the process, I'm going to see what we can do with this idea, how we can... is just to say to yourself okay so because like what 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 is it that moves why does music move people why why what is it about music that moves people it's literally that you move from one state to another yeah you start here you go there and then you come back here again or something like that yeah you're going from one state to another now at dropped out i'm sorry <clears throat> i don't know what you missed so uh yeah but anyway that's weird am i back can you see me hello folks can you see me Okay. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. So, okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so, music moves people because literally you're moving someone from one state to another. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Um, and at the, at the moment, this piece of music as it is, the one that I splurged out, what is essentially is it's moving you from a state of kind of calm longing to a state of intense longing. Yeah. So, uh, so there, so yeah, sorry about that. Um, so there is that, so, so there is that movement, but what I want to, what I want to show you and using this as a model is, well, what else could you do? Yeah. Because you might not just want a, just a, you know, a big kind of just making it more intense and less intense. You can do that. 
Yeah, and I mean, essentially, it's very simple how you make it more and less intense in this case is that I've basically just opened a filter and added more effects and then just played the piano kind of louder and harder and more, yeah, you know, so in, instead of, instead of, you know, oh, gosh, no. got to get the right track. Oh, what a fool. I am a fool. I just went back to the thing. I have to do this again. Apologies, apologies, apologies. This form of uh, this form of teaching is new to me, so you're going to have to excuse me. I'll be I'll get better at this as I as I go on. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are you, Piano Tech? Where are you when I need you? Don't hide. Ah, there you are. As you're where you're meant to be in alphabetical order. Uh, right. Oh, that's why. Piano. All right. Oh, not that one. This one. Okay. Got to put the river back in. Mm -hmm. I'm naming it. Uh, right. It's one of the best things. That one of the best things ever about Luna is that when you want to put a plugin in, you can literally just type it up here, and it will come up with the. It will find it for you, rather than having to. Oh, it's just joyous. Oh. Anyway. So, um, save so much time going back to logic and having to select things. It's just so annoying. <laughs> um, anyway, it's basically displaying. So that will do for now. It's a ridiculous reverb. Okay. Why can't I hear that? Um, ah, Reaper does it too. Well, that's good. Oh my goodness me! What the... <laughs> All right, what's coming through there? Why can't I hear it? Can you hear that? No. <sighs> Just try this. Oh, I know. I sent it to the bus, I think. I think. Yep, that's why. Did I? Yeah, no. Log yeah. Uh, that's, I didn't send it to the bus. What's going on? Yeah, I can't hear it either. I can't. <laughs> Sorry, it's not just you. Uh... That's why. Oh my God. What's going on? There we go. Right. Disable all. Right, there we go. So, <clears throat> so what was I saying? I've, I've lost my thread now. Uh, I was saying that yes, got it. Right. So, the point was. See if I can remember the notes. Sorry about the clicks. 
I'll get that sorted for the next time. Yeah, so if I play it like this... Obviously that's very calm and relaxing. Yeah. Whereas if I go... Yeah, it's more uh, yeah, uh, uh, like that. Now, so that is obviously moving from relaxed to intense. Yeah, and, and that already, so this piece of music as it is now, already moves you from one state to uh, another. Yeah. Um, but that's not the only thing you can do. And I mean, to be honest with you, I probably would, I probably would, I probably will do a version of it just like this. I'll just do the live version of it, which is just like this. But what else can we do with it? Where else can we move? Uh, where else can we uh, move people? Hey, Luigi. There are girls here too, <laughs> um, and others. So, so yeah. So, so let's let, let's uh, let's uh, let's make sure that we uh, say hello to the girls too. Um, uh, so yeah. Anyway, so the we yeah. So we can move it, not just from less intense to more intense. We can move it to slightly different states. So how would I, so uh, slightly or massively different states. So one thing I might do is say to myself, well, what would a, what would an emotion or a feeling or a way of doing things, uh, d a, sort of a way of being be that was highly contrasting with longing? What would it be? What would what 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 could I do that would be highly contrasting with lo longing? Maybe um, acceptance. I mean, it's not highly contrasting necessarily, but it is contrast. I mean, longing is about is about kind of wishing that something was there that isn't. Yeah, and acceptance is about the state of of accepting that it's not there. Yeah. So this is kind of going along with sort of the initial thoughts I had was that I'm grateful for the fact I, I'm grateful for the fact that I, that I had it. Yeah. So I've, I've no longer have this thing. Yeah. I'm disgusted is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, that's very contrasting. So, you know, you can use something like anger or, you know, disgust. Yeah. So, um, But, you know, there's a lot, a lot of different things that you can use. But what, I mean, what I'm thinking is, how about making the purpose of this track about going from longing, wanting, like wanting that I wish I had this thing that I had in the past. Yeah. Going from that to actually... I'm glad I'm, 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 I don't have this thing now and I accept that I don't have this thing and I'm grateful that I accept this thing. I'm grateful that I accept this thing. I'm grateful that I no longer have this thing because it's all the sweeter. Yeah. How about that? Because what you're going from is a state of tension. Oh, I really want this thing. I don't have it to a state of release which is okay i now i'm at one with it i'm happy that i had this experience and that i don't i accept that i i can no longer have it yeah because that to me it fit i mean it kind of it's already in that area this piece of music is already in that area and i mean if i did a section which was like resentment yeah and i'm not saying it's wrong you could yeah but it's almost like it doesn't f it, it's it's too far yeah yeah exactly better to have loved than love you know better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all that, that yeah exactly so so i mean i could do resentment i could do anger i mean in a sense but in fact anger may well be something that you want to 
that I want to bring into it before the acceptance. It's almost like, oh, no, I don't have it. And then, yeah, and then you, yeah, because that, I mean, I, you know, that movement from longing to kind of frustration that you don't have it, pain, suffering, then to acceptance, that feels like an, a, a really nice arc that a piece of music could express, right? So now we've come to the point at which this piece of music is going to express longing and it's almost like a suffering. Yeah, the, the, oh, I wish, if only, if only I was still 20 years old again. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, and, you know, and then it kind of moves into this sort of anger and frustration and then ends in acceptance and gratitude. Yeah, that feels like a, a purpose that I'm excited to express. Yeah, that I'm excited to serve that fits with what there already is, yeah? And it gives me some decisions to make. I mean, it, it sort of makes some decisions for me. There are some things that I won't do. I won't be able to do like, that. That wouldn't make sense. And there are other things that are much, much more uh, 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 valuable, yeah? That, that will serve the purpose much better, okay? So... I've been going way longer than expected because I've been answering all kinds of other questions. But what I'm going to do is I will post on this channel and we'll, we'll do another one um, following on from this where I actually do the stuff. Basically, I'm going to probably have to see if I can figure out this lunar problem because of all the clicking and stuff. If not, I'll just do it uh, in uh, Logic because um, I think that's just much more uh, stable uh, with the sound. But... Essentially, and I'll show you the decisions, you know, how I can actually make the music do the thing. Um, and some of the decisions I make about, well, what I'm going to try, and I'll actually do it as well. Um, so watch out on the channel. I can't do it right now because, you know, I'll have to look at my calendar uh, and, and everything. Um, uh, but... But basically, hopefully this has been valuable. It's been incredibly all over the place. I apologize about that. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Sorry about the squirrel uh, thing uh, as well. I'll get better at this. Um, but I think, you know, I do uh, coach in lots of different ways. And I think this kind of coaching is something that I'm really excited to do, uh, which is by showing, literally showing you what I'm doing and my thinking process. It's something I'm really, really excited to do. Um, and it's something that I can do relatively easily uh, um, and uh, regularly, as long as I sort out the uh, <laughs> the technical issues in my squirrel. Um, but uh, it, yeah, uh, so so apologies for being so all over the place. Um, I'll get better at it. Um, uh, and just watch out on the channel, like, subscribe, remind, all that stuff. It will be in the next uh, few days. I can't exactly remember what my uh, schedule is like there. I'm going to be over on Zentor doing... A new, uh, another one, uh, almost uh, immediately once I sorted out the cameras and stuff. So, um, oh yeah, and consider doing the Turbo Track Attack. We're doing it tomorrow. So until next time, should be later on this week. Onwards and upwards. <laughs>